Hey, it's Mike here, and today, cardio versus strength training, really muscle mass for longevity. This is a situation where I was just scrolling along and I saw a semi-viral video by a young woman at Stanford saying her professor blew her mind by saying that actually strength training is better for your heart health. And then it got me down this whole rabbit hole. And then I felt like I needed to answer the question, what is the most efficient thing for me to spend my time on? What should people be doing in general from just a public health perspective? Now, what's the biggest bang for your buck? Is it better to run away, get some cardio and run from the Grim Reaper? Or is it better to get super buff and intimidate the Grim Reaper to stay away from you? Let's investigate, let's go. So the journey starts with Anna or untitled.entity on TikTok. I took a metabolism class with a Stanford professor. And one of the very first things that he said to us is every single article online you see about metabolism is cherry picking information and that's why so many different articles will tell you different things but i've read thousands of peer-reviewed studies and i'm going to tell you what's actually true and i actually think people are not not gonna like it which is really unfortunate because i went back to clip what she said and the sound is just gone. So thanks, TikTok. Her professor said that those who had greater levels of lean mass had lower levels of cardiovascular disease. That is true, that is a point here. And of course, that is also the case for longevity as well, more lean mass lower all-cause mortality. But for a concrete connection there, it appears that there was a Stanford study that found strength training was better for fat mass, lean mass, and blood sugar control than cardio. The key here is lean mass, I believe. So maybe his buddies did the study, study buddies, and then from studies like this one, the high versus low lean mass gain is only about 15% less cardiovascular disease mortality, with other studies showing about 7% less. And we even have some U-shaped curves, like from this study with lean mass, showing that as you get up to a certain point, your mortality risk actually goes up, maybe because it's representing obesity. Sometimes heavier people have more muscle as well. And this smaller study did find that shockingly, if you can pull off high muscle, low fat, you could achieve a 68% lower cardiovascular disease and total mortality rate. But take that with a grain of salt. Again, we're looking for the meta-analyses here. We can just ask ChatGPT, which I think is interesting, just for gauging what the general public perception is what has been written about, and ChatGPT does say that cardio is better than strength training. And you can definitely see that reflected in the comments on that TikTok video. Everybody is saying, hey, wait, this seems off. Cardio seems to be better. And for me, I'm just neutral on that topic. I just want whatever is best. <laughs> and while the initial conversation was on cardio versus strength training for cardiovascular disease, I think it's more interesting to just expand it into longevity and mortality in general. That's what I'm interested in. But one comparison I wanna start with because I think it is absolutely fascinating is the elite athletes in each category and which ones live longer. Of course, we're gonna to get to a bunch of studies on mortality data, et cetera, for exercise of various types. And that brings us to elite bodybuilders versus elite runners as well as marathon runners. First, let's look to those bodybuilders because anecdotally, you've probably heard and seen and witnessed a lot of these bodybuilders dying way too soon. It's in the news a lot. But the very interesting point is that it didn't used to be this way. We have a study that actually compared different eras of bodybuilding and the longevity of those eras. So those older eras, we're talking bodybuilders like 1900 to 1960. And that's quite a man of muckle. What a built. Those were living several years longer than the average person. But then with the advent of performance enhancing drugs into that modern golden era of bodybuilding, we saw bodybuilder lifespan drop by about 12 years, which is wild. Here for a buff time, but not a long time, sadly. But overall, I think this is just a good signal for people who are strength training more normally, not going crazy with Tren and other performance enhancers who are probably gonna see an improvement with that. We'll see how it compares. But then we have to ask about marathon runners. Is it the case that they're all overdoing it on their joints and just blasting all that oxidative stress on their system, getting advanced aging well. We have this report from the International Longevity Center on elite athletes, which shows a general trend for longer life for cardio sports, except cycling, citing the accident dangers. And swimming seems to win, which gives credence to the otherwise highly pseudoscientific aquatic ape theory that humans evolved in the water. But importantly here, they found that longer distance runners over three kilometers, which includes marathon runners, of course, live longer than shorter distance runners like sprinters. And this study looked at the first 200 athletes who ever ran a mile under four minutes competitively. They lived five years longer than your average person, 
but that really would be expected of their athletes. So with one of the researchers straight up saying that it's a stubbornly held view that they don't live as long, going as far as to call it a fallacy that you can exercise too much. And we do also see that Tour de France cyclists live longer than the average population as well. So interesting stuff. All right, now what I wanna do is go through, look at a bunch of research and really compare the pros and cons of strength training, getting that muscle mass versus the pros and cons of cardiovascular training. Important to say that this is epidemiology we're largely looking at here. We can see some mechanisms in a bit, but that means correlation, not causation. However, it can be causation. So it's really hard to parse. We can't just randomize large swaths of the population to either exercise or not in a controlled fashion. So this is what we got. Thankfully, there is a ton of research on this topic. First of all, from this study, which is really Looking at 10 separate meta-analyses, dang, that's a lot. They say that compared with undertaking no resistance training, undertaking any amount of resistance training reduces the risk of all-cause mortality by 15%. And then we can see cardiovascular mortality by 19 and cancer by 14 for mortality. And then they saw a maximum reduction of 27% for those who worked 60 minutes or more during strength training. And they also mentioned that the gains in longevity were diminishing as you had more time. So they peaked at 60 and then not really a return after that. And then what about muscle mass itself? Well, we have another meta-analysis here and this looked at 16 separate studies and found an all-cause mortality increase of 57% for those with the lowest muscle mass category versus normal muscle mass. Oh, so this is where somebody with low muscle mass strength training could really get them out of that risk category. However, I once again have to ask, could this be reverse causation in the sense that People who ain't doing so hot aren't gonna be out and about working out their muscles and maintaining a normal level of muscle, which wouldn't necessarily be caused by not having muscle. It's that the not having muscle is caused by the not being healthy. And then I got wondering, well, what other metrics of strength are there besides just muscle mass and are they affecting mortality, for example? And one is grip strength. And we have another massive study. We're talking about a meta-analysis of 33 studies finding that those with the highest versus lowest levels of grip strength had a 31% decrease in all-cause mortality. That's over the course of the study. Whenever I say that, it's not a 30% difference in immortality. <laughs> anyway, I've been rock climbing, not as much lately and getting my grip strength up, which is super satisfying. I highly suggest it. And this just makes me feel better about it. I gotta hop back on that wall. And this is where we have to get into some mechanisms here for the pros of muscle. And this is where we have to get to frailty. So there's a certain point where if you fall in old age, it can be a death sentence. Time being bedridden really degrades muscle and you might not get that muscle back. And so survival of any chronic disease, et cetera, hugely dependent on how much muscle you have on your body when you get that disease. And this meta-analysis from a couple months ago found to my surprise that aerobic slash cardio exercise did a bit better than resistance training for bone density gains in the hip at about plus 16% versus 7.5, but resistance training did better in the lower spine bone density. We're talking 22 points versus 16 points. But there's a couple of connections mechanisms, but then we also have one that's very direct and metabolic, and that is that muscle mass helps regulate glucose. As this study mentions, 80% of your postprandial or after meal glucose is actually taken up by your muscles. So you can imagine somebody who has twice as much muscle mass might have twice the level of insulin sensitivity, which is of course what you want. Insulin resistance is, you know, the foundation of diabetes. So having more muscle mass in this case can regulate glucose. We also have another study showing that people with more muscle mass have a lower glucose. So if you can get more muscle and regulate that glucose, you're gonna have less of those sort of glycated end products in your blood, less oxidative stress, less aging in that sense. And of course, lower mortality, lower diabetes risk, benefit, benefit, benefit. Now let's quickly get to the cons of focusing on muscle. And this is where the con section is much shorter for both of these. The first con here is that if you get too jacked, you might not be able to fit through the emergency room door to receive some health services. <laughs> and the main con to me here really is indirect. And that is more or less that there's a culture that if you're trying to put on muscle mass, you're gonna be consuming protein. There's a big push to be consuming way too much protein. And when you consume too much protein, then you upregulate aging pathways such as mTOR. You upregulate that IGF-1 as well, which as I've said before, fuels every stage of cancer growth. You know, if it's given the right environment. And to once again, nutshell what's happening here, mTOR being a growth pathway is a really, when you're looking at feast or famine, this is the 
feast stage. So your body's saying, we have resources, grow, grow, grow. You're consuming all of this protein that is activating mTOR saying, grow, grow, grow. And that results in a lower autophagy or sort of the recycling of your cells and various things that are good for aging and actually ends up boosting things that accelerate aging. This is really not something you want. Boost mTOR and like lower the lifespan of worms and things like that. Not trying too hard, but evolutionarily it kind of makes sense. You got a bunch of growth. You want to turn over generations faster, get more genetic diversity in a shorter period of time. And that's why we're programmed like that. And of course, modern bodybuilding is a culture of consuming a huge amount of animal protein. I do think that has to do with the increased mortality in modern bodybuilders as well. It's perhaps an aspect eating super high saturated fat, clogging arteries, getting heart attacks, etc. But even though this isn't a con, I just wanted to throw in this study really quickly here, looking at plant protein consumption and frailty and plant protein outperformed animal protein when it came to lowering frailty in this study, which is cool. And then there's the implied con that if you're deciding to lift weights, you're not going to be doing cardio at that point. So let's get into the pros of cardio, starting with another study into this population, about a quarter of them participated in running. And so we had runners versus non runners. And the results are pretty dramatic that compared with non runners, runners had 30% and 45% lower adjusted risk of all cause and cardiovascular mortality, respectively, really with a three year life expectancy gain. So, so right there, sorry to Anna Stanford professor, because we are not seeing a 45% reduction in cardiovascular mortality for weightlifting or strength training. <laughs> but maybe you're not a runner. Maybe there's some reason you can't do that, but you could maybe get some steps in. Well, this study looked at steps and they found that for every 1000 step increment, you get a 15% decreased risk of all cause mortality. Does that mean that if I take like 7,000 steps, I just become immortal? Is that what the movie Step Up is about? Stepping up to heaven or immortality? Well, uh, no, this is what it's about. And this is where, again, we're getting into the massive studies. This one just, just makes me happy. It's an overview of meta-analyses representing over 20 million observations from 199 unique cohort studies. That is huge. They say, quote, cardiorespiratory fitness had the largest reduction for all-cause mortality when comparing high versus low at 53% reduction in mortality. You know, so remember, massive meta-analysis on weightlifting, 15% reduction. Massive meta-analysis on cardio, over 50% reduction in all-cause mortality. And another metric of this is VO2 max. It's associated with decreased mortality in a way that appears to have no ceiling. Like the better you get, the better you do. And then I know this isn't a diet video, but side note, this study did find that vegans had higher VO2 max, which is cool and not directly explained by the study. And in terms of mechanisms, a lot of you guys already know the ones here, but we can just go over some really quickly. Of course, we have lowering blood pressure, increasing blood flow. It could be getting blood flow to places that, you know, imagine a sedentary person wouldn't get. That can cause various issues. And then we also have, of course, the direct strengthening of the heart muscle, as well as increased elasticity of vessels, all things that are gonna help prevent us dying from our leading killer, which is heart disease. All right, now cons for cardio. Again, this is a short list. One that comes up right off the bat is just people going too hard too fast and potentially having really negative side effects from that. So uh, <laughs> don't go too hard. And one example that I see all the time in the news as someone who lives in a wintry place is people snow shoveling and then getting heart attacks, people that do not get cardio going and doing that cardio and just sadly uh, passing away. And then another con is there's people that physically just can't do impact for whatever reason. However, you can of course do low impact exercises. You can get on stationary bikes or bike period, swimming, etc. And then I want to address one that is viewed as a con that we're gonna have to twist around here. And that is really the oxidative stress from exercise. Of course, your metabolism creates those free radicals, leads to oxidative stress. However, through hormesis, a word that more people are becoming aware of, which is stress that leads to an increase in strength your body adjusts to that. So you have this hormesis window, as you can see in this chart, but then the potential to overtrain and increase oxidative stress is there. However, that oxidative stress of exercise can be offset by plant antioxidants, as we've seen in those classic watercress studies highlighted by Nutrition Facts. All right, now this is where I have to seriously disappoint you guys because, well, yeah, it looks like cardio is doing a little bit better. The real winner here appears to be combining both. From this study, combining modalities provide synergy, for example, meeting aerobic guidelines plus weight weightlifting one to two times weekly was linked to approximately 40% lower all-cause mortality, which outperformed cardio alone at just 32%. And back to that study on bone density, a combination of both crushed it, winning over either individually so hard, 
pun. And you might be wondering how much exercise should I be doing in general? Are there diminishing returns? Well, we have this study that looked at minutes per week. And they found that it sort of capped off at 300, 600 minutes per week at a 28 to 38% lower risk. Cardiovascular mortality, about 25% overall mortality reduction. Or a 26 to 30% lower risk of all mortality had and over 600 minutes we're talking 90 minutes per day on average did not have additional benefits, but once again, showed no negative. And then we also have another joint benefit, just a pro for both of them, and that is potentially lowering dementia risk. We're seeing some really good results from getting cardiovascular exercise or weightlifting in terms of cognitive decline. All right, so in the end, again, we're seeing maybe 15 or 20% reduction in all-cause mortality with strength training, which is cool, that's really good, but we're breaking 50% in those meta-analyses for cardiovascular exercise. So cardio wins, however, why not do both? Why not hit the cardio, get the extra benefits from also weightlifting? We're talking about lowering frailty, which is huge for fighting chronic disease, being able to be bedridden for a longer period of time without having a huge mortality risk. And yeah, it looks like we uncovered a couple of fallacies here. First of all, those marathon runners are not dying sooner. They're living longer on average. And then we also have really that bodybuilding itself isn't gonna be lowering your lifespan. It's that lifespan lowered once we added all of those performance enhancing drugs. Before that, bodybuilders were living longer. So yeah, go and get your exercise. And of course, let me know down below if there are any cool studies I missed, any other mechanisms here at play in terms of cardio or in terms of strength training for longevity or any other disease in the comments below. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.